major steps. One of the first things that's different with vertically mounted equipment is the orientation. With horizontally mounted equipment, we oriented ourselves with the fixed component on the left and the movable component on the right. In addition, we set up a clock face around the fixed component's hub with the 12 o'clock position at the top. With vertically mounted equipment, this orientation is impossible. So we'll have to establish a new orientation, which is illustrated here. In this case, the movable component, a motor, is on the top, and the fixed component, a pump, is on the bottom. If we view the setup from the top, we see the motor has four mounting bolts 90 degrees apart. The motor has been removed from this view so we can see the pump's shaft. We can set up the clock face so each bolt represents one of the positions on the clock face. We'll use this bolt to represent the 12 o'clock position. Then this bolt will represent 3 o'clock, this bolt 6 o'clock, and this bolt 9 o'clock. Another difference with this type of arrangement is that we're no longer dealing with vertical and horizontal planes. Instead, we have a 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock plane and a 3 to 9 o'clock plane. Now that we've established our orientation and identified the clock face positions, we're going to see how misalignment can be measured with dial indicators. Keep in mind that when you're aligning vertical equipment, you'll need to take care of the same types of pre-alignment preparations that are required for horizontal equipment. We'll use this illustration to show one way that dial indicators can be installed. In this example, the brackets and dial indicators are set up for a rim and face alignment. The bracket that supports the two dial indicators is attached to the motor's shaft, and the bracket with the targets is attached to the pump's shaft. This target represents the rim of the fixed component's hub, and this target represents the face of the fixed component's hub. With the rim and face method, one dial indicator, this one, measures parallel misalignment by taking rim readings. We'll call this the P dial indicator. This dial indicator measures angular misalignment by taking face readings. We'll call this the A dial indicator. When you align the shafts of vertically mounted equipment, in addition to measuring the misalignment, you also need to take some tape measurements. So let's take a look now at the measurements that are often taken for a vertical arrangement. The first measurement we need is the swing diameter of the A dial indicator. The swing diameter is the diameter of the circle that the A indicator travels around as it's rotated. To determine this swing diameter, we measure the distance from the stem of the A dial indicator to the center line of the fixed component's shaft. For our example, this distance is 4 inches. Then we multiply this distance by 2, so the swing diameter is 8 inches. The measurements are recorded on a data sheet like this one. The measurement we just discussed, the swing diameter of the A dial indicator, is recorded in a box labeled D. This data sheet has a lot of the same information we've seen before. It has a place to record information about the equipment, and it has a place to enter dial indicator readings. We'll be looking more closely at this section of the data sheet a bit later. You may have noticed that there is no reference to bar sag on this data sheet. That's because it's not a factor with vertically mounted equipment. Your text explains why. Returning to our measurements, the second measurement is the distance between the center line of the bolt at the 12 o'clock position and the center line of the bolt at 6 o'clock. This distance is 6 inches. This value is recorded in the box labeled X. The final measurement is the distance between the center line of the bolt at 9 o'clock and the center line of the bolt at 3 o'clock. This distance is also 6 inches. And this value gets recorded in the box labeled Y. At this point in our example, we have our tape measurements, and we've seen how the dial indicators can be set up. The next step is to take readings on the dial indicators. The readings will help us measure parallel and angular misalignment. To begin, the dial indicators are at the 12 o'clock position. Also, the readings on the indicators are adjusted to zero. Next, both shafts are slowly rotated 360 degrees and back to the 12 o'clock position. As before, this is done to make sure the brackets and dial indicators are securely fastened. If both readings return to zero, we should be in good shape to continue. Now, we can take sweep readings with the dial indicators. 
This means rotating both shafts and taking readings from both dial indicators at the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions. After taking these readings, it's a good practice to return to the 12 o'clock position and double check that the dials read zero again. For this example, at the 3 o'clock position, the P indicator reads plus 1 mil, and the A indicator reads plus 5 mils. At 6 o'clock, the P indicator reads plus 3 mils, and the A indicator reads plus 6 mils. And at 9 o'clock, P is plus 2 mils, and A is plus 1 mil. To confirm the accuracy of these readings, a second set should be taken. The readings obtained should be the same as the first set. The dial indicator readings would also be recorded on the data sheet. Readings from the P dial indicator are recorded here. There's a box for the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock readings. Readings from the A dial indicator are recorded here in the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock boxes. Using the data sheet and the readings, we can figure out the parallel and angular misalignment in both the 12 to 6 o'clock plane and in the 3 to 9 o'clock plane. We'll start with the P indicator for the 12 to 6 plane. To determine the parallel misalignment in this plane, we take the 6 o'clock reading and divide it by 2. This accounts for misalignment negated by zeroing at 12 o'clock. Positive 3 divided by 2 equals positive 1.5 mils. This value is recorded in the box labeled P1. To determine parallel misalignment in the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock plane, first the 3 o'clock reading is subtracted from the 9 o'clock reading. Plus 2 subtract plus 1 equals plus 1. Then this value is divided by 2. Plus 1 divided by 2 equals plus 0.5 mils. This is recorded in the box labeled P2. To determine the angular misalignment in the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock plane, all you do is transfer the 6 o'clock reading to the box labeled A1. So the angular misalignment in the 12 to 6 plane is plus 6 mils. Dividing by 2 is not necessary because zeroing the A dial indicator does not negate any angular misalignment. For the 3 to 9 plane, angular misalignment is determined by subtracting the 3 o'clock reading from the 9 o'clock reading. Plus 1 minus plus 5 equals negative 4. This value is recorded in the A2 box. Now we've determined the parallel and angular misalignment in both the 12 to 6 and 3 to 9 planes. After measuring the parallel and angular misalignment in both planes, the next step is to correct the misalignment. We'll be doing that when we return. For now, review the information we just covered and be sure you understand it before you continue. In the last part of the program, we began looking at shaft alignment for vertically mounted equipment. We established the orientation of the pump and motor. We saw which tape measurements are required. And we took sweep readings to measure parallel and angular misalignment. What we're going to do now is see how to correct the misalignment. As you recall, we had established our orientation with the movable component, the motor, on top, and the fixed component, the pump, on the bottom. Our clock face positions are 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. The sweep readings are recorded on the data sheet. These readings determined the parallel misalignment in the 12 to 6 plane and in the 3 to 9 plane. They also determined the angular misalignment in the 12 to 6 and 3 to 9 planes. With this information, we can figure out how to correct for both the parallel and angular misalignment. We'll discuss parallel misalignment first. With horizontally mounted equipment, parallel misalignment is usually corrected by shifting the motor sideways. However, with vertically mounted equipment, the motor is often connected to the pump with several bolts and a machined fit. This type of connection makes it impossible to move the motor sideways and correct for parallel misalignment. What's often done in situations like this is that the parallel misalignment will be measured to determine if it's within tolerances. If it is, then the angular misalignment is corrected. 
If the parallel misalignment is not within tolerances, there may be a problem with a frame that connects the motor to the pump. Here's an example of this type of frame with vertically mounted equipment. It's common to have a frame between the motor and the pump. If parallel misalignment is measured and found to be outside of tolerances, it generally means that the frame has warped or bent. This often requires extensive remachining or a new frame to correct the misalignment. This work would have to be done before the alignment could be continued. For our example, the parallel misalignment tolerance is two mils, and the actual parallel misalignment, as measured by the P dial indicator, is within tolerance for both the 12 to 6 and the 3 to 9 planes. So at this point, we'll move on and see how to correct the angular misalignment in both planes. Before we continue, we should acknowledge that in some cases it is possible to correct parallel misalignment in vertically mounted equipment. We'll see basically how that's done in a few minutes. Now to correct angular misalignment, you'll reposition the motor by adding or removing shims. To figure out where the shims go and how many you need to add or remove, you can use formulas or graphs. The formula method is explained in your text. Here, we'll look at the graph method. Since we're dealing with angular misalignment in two planes, the 12 to 6 plane and the 3 to 9 plane, we'll need to plot a graph for each plane. We'll do the 12 to 6 plane first. To start, we'll plot a base point near the left side of the graph. We'll call this point A. We draw a straight line across from point A. This line represents the center line of the fixed component's shaft. In other words, it represents the desired alignment position. We'll need some information from the data sheet to continue. We need distance D, 8 inches. If you recall, D is the swing diameter of the A dial indicator stem. We also need distance X, 6 inches. X is the distance between the center line of the bolt at the 12 o'clock position and the center line of the bolt at 6 o'clock. Now we plot these points on the line, counting across from point A. We plot D at the eighth increment and X six increments to the right of D. Next we need to plot A1, which is plus six mils. A1 represents the angular misalignment in the 12 to 6 plane. Since A1 is positive, we move up from point A six increments. We'll call this point A1. Now we draw a straight line through points A1 and D. This line represents the misalignment in the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock plane. To determine how to move the motor, we count the increments straight down from point X to the line we just drew. We'll call this point X1. X1 is between 4 and 5 increments below the line, so we'll round it off to 5 mils. With this type of graph, if X1 is below the desired line, shims are added under the 6 o'clock foot. If X1 is above the desired line, shims are added under the 12 o'clock foot. So to correct for angular misalignment in the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock plane, we have to add 5 mils of shims under the 6 o'clock foot. We can construct another graph to calculate how to correct the misalignment in the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock plane. Once again, we plot a base point A and draw a straight line across from it. We also plot point D again, 8 inches, which we got from the data sheet. This time we plot distance Y, which is 6 inches. Y is the distance between the center line of the bolt at 9 o'clock and the center line of the bolt at 3 o'clock. Now, we need the value of A2 from the data sheet. A2, which is negative 4 mils, represents the angular misalignment in the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock plane. A2 is negative, so to plot it on the graph, we move down from point A four increments. Now we draw our line through A2 and point D. This line represents the misalignment in the 3 to 9 plane. To determine how to correct the misalignment in this plane, we count the increments straight up from point Y on the graph to the line. It's three mils above the desired line. We'll call this point Y1. With this graph, 
If Y1 is above the desired line, shims are added to the 3 o'clock foot. If Y1 is below the line, shims are added to the 9 o'clock foot. So in this case, to correct for angular misalignment in both planes, three mills have to be added under the 3 o'clock foot, and five mills have to be added under the 6 o'clock foot. The procedure for adding shims on vertically mounted equipment is similar to what we've seen before, but depending on the type of connection between the motor and pump, you may have to cut shims from stock. A few guidelines for doing this are given in your text. When the shims have been installed and the bolts tightened, another set of sweep readings should be taken to make sure the shafts are aligned within tolerances. As we said earlier, with some vertically mounted equipment, it is possible to correct parallel misalignment. If it's possible, it's typically done after correcting angular misalignment. To determine how far the motor should be moved to correct parallel misalignment, all you need are the values P1 and P2 from the data sheet. For this example, let's say that P1 is plus 5 mils and P2 is negative 6 mils. These values tell how far to move the motor in each plane to correct the parallel misalignment. Now we need to know in which direction to move the motor. With this method, the rule is that if P1 is positive, the motor is moved toward 6 o'clock. If P1 is negative, it's moved toward 12 o'clock. In this example, P1 is plus 5 mils, so the motor should be moved 5 mils toward 6 o'clock to correct the parallel misalignment in the 12 to 6 plane. For the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock plane, if P2 is positive, the motor is moved toward 9 o'clock. If it's negative, the motor is moved toward 3 o'clock. In this case, P2 is negative 6 mils, so the motor should be moved 6 mils toward 3 o'clock to correct the parallel misalignment in the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock plane. When the motor shifted to correct for parallel misalignment, a dial indicator can be used in each plane to monitor how far the motor is